So for the guests who have started to join us now, welcome. We were kind of giving it a few minutes because we're aware that sometimes there's a bit of a time lag from kind of jumping in and stuff. And I can see that other people are starting to drop in. So I am going to get the thing, the, kick the, this thing off, get everything going. Um, but again, what we will do is as more of you um, join in, I'll, I'll kind of go over some of the instructions again if I think, think you kind of need it. So good evening. Um, I'm Dr. Sue Greenwood and I'm the Associate Head of Production here at York St. John University in the absolutely stunning city of York. Not quite as nice as Tenerife where Richard Francis is joining us from, <laughs> but still still pretty damn pretty. Um, great, great, yeah. yeah. Um, welcome to what we hope will be a frank and lively discussion on race in the TV industry based on the experiences of our amazing guest panelists today. There are um, there is a little bit of information missed to give you first of all, which is that this session has been recorded and it's we can't see you, you can only see us. Um, if you leave a question in the Q&A, we might be able to see your name, but we don't have to read that out. So you're entirely within an anonymous, it's just us who are kind of on screen for you. Um, if you want to make use of the BSL, the British Sign Language Interpreters who are with us, so Nikki is working at the moment, and we've also got Poise to take over, uh, Eddie Quisiri, um, who's also kind of down there as well. Oh, I can see we've also got a, someone joining us from Williamsburg in Virginia. That's even further away than Tenerife. Okay. Um, if you if you are um, working with our BSL, our British Sign Language Interpreters, then do please try and join us from a laptop if you can, just because you'll be able to see more, um, more of the panelists at once. Um, the format will be, we, uh, uh, Everett is going to lead the session. He's going to talk to each of our panelists. Um, there will be questions, there will be discussion, and then we will finish up with some time for you to ask questions as well. If you have... <clears throat> She's got nothing. Oh yeah, yeah. I thought, hang on a minute. I think we'll get her back here. Yeah. There she is. There she is. <laughs> It'll be fine. Sure. Uh, Rita, unfortunately, won't be joining us tonight. Rita Chakrabarti is, is unable to join us tonight. Um, and that was a last minute decision. It's unforeseen circumstances. And she's desperately sorry that she can't be here and really sends her, her apologies. However, what we do have is an amazing uh, panel to speak to you, regardless of Rita. Hopefully she's going <coughs> to watch us from wherever she is. The panel is being led by York St. John lecturer and investigative, journal, investigative journalist, Dr. Everett um, Lovo. And joining Everett is Diana Francis, who is a production manager with over 15 years experience in factual entertainment and documentary making for Channel 4, channel, including for Channel 4 Documentaries Woodward and the Stephen Lawrence Day campaign. We've also got freelance VT editor, Richard Francis, who started out working on music videos for Janet Jackson and others, and whose credits include Deal or No Deal, The Only Way is Essex, and several FIFA World Cups. And we've also got Nikki Topping, who was born and raised in Yorkshire, and um, includes like myself, and runs Nikki Topping Casting, and she has many years experience of casting for feature films, television commercials, short films, and drama. And I'm now going to hand you over to Everett's Capable Hands. See you later. Thank you for joining us and welcome to the show. And as you are aware, we are doing this talk or this show at a time when we are celebrating Black History Month. I thought I'll start by firstly uh, talking about how Black History Month started. It is the brainchild of a genius of his time, Carter Woodson who in 1915 started an association for the study of Negro life and history. And his aim was to celebrate the achievements of black people, the achievements which were by then downplayed as history has always been written by the victors. First onto the victims, 
and the narrative barricaded in strong concrete to make it unnegotiable. So therefore, um, Mr. Wilson wanted change. And through Black History Month, he wanted us to celebrate other people, no matter who they are, no matter what color they are, so that their achievements could be acknowledged. Then through Black History Month, we can learn particular achievements of people whose struggles under great adversity and whose stories can be tremendous inspiration to the usually marginalized sectors of the population, whose stories are never told as people who own the platforms of expression are usually the same people who perpetrate racism and hate. Then, while Black History Month usually celebrates the achievements of the likes of Martin Luther King, Marcus Garvey, Obama, and the rest, we tend to overlook the achievements of our own Black people in the UK who have done a lot of tremendous good things which have become an inspiration to us all and made us proud of who we are. That is why today we have got a great panel of achievers in the media industry. People who did the unthinkable, people who achieved what nobody ever thought they could achieve. I'm talking about people who slept, dreamt, woke up and worked on their dreams to be where they are, who they are, and what they are today. And people who have gone through all the troubles, uh, despite all the thorns, scorpions, and vipers on their way, they never gave up. They said, yes, we can. And one of those people is Diana. Hey, Diana, I, I'm going to start with you. You run a very successful uh, production company uh, called uh, Naked. What is it about your upbringing with, which made you think, despite who of who you are and what color you are, yes, you could do it? Uh, thank you. Well, um, first of all, I don't. I, I just work at Naked, so I'm not. I'm not at the level where I'm running a company yet. But yeah. um, I'm a production manager there. Um, yeah. And I think my brother will probably agree with that. We were just always brought up to never, sort of never, just tread our own path and never really take no for an answer. So we were never made to feel inferior at home. There was like, I don't think there, we didn't think there was any reason why we couldn't do what we wanted. I, I, yeah, mm -hmm. that, that, so yeah, we just, we just did what we wanted to do. We got, well, I was speaking for myself, I got interested in, documentaries and, and media just by watching the news and, and documentaries with my dad when I was a kid and just decided it was something that I wanted to try and do. So yeah, that's how that started. That's how I started. And how did you get your foot in the door? Did you get any challenges uh, as a result of who you are? Yeah, well, I've got a lot of challenges because I, when I was looking to start, it was sort of in the eighties where I mean, it is very much still like White Oxbridge, but I mean, that that really has, hasn't changed as much as, as, it, as it should. But um, so that's the initial thing, just trying to get people to take you seriously, even coming from a working class background. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just not it's just not, not one of those things. Even when I went to the careers advisor at school, there was sort of, oh, well, you should go and be a secretary and stuff. So I just... I tried doing that because I thought the skills would be useful and stuff, but then I just started after pounding on doors and trying to get work experience. It was a long slog, really long slog. Yeah. And I'm sure you have faced a lot of uh, discrimination in the industry. For instance, um, at one time when you were filming in Perkham, uh, you experienced a lot of uh, racist comments and so on. Can you give us an example? Can you, can you tell us more about those? Yeah, I mean, um, the experience in Peckham, it was I was production managing a series called Secret Millionaire that Char uh, Channel 4 used to do. 
and uh, of course as usual like the, the whole of the production team was white and I started panicking a bit because they were having to go to Peckham I mean it was it was really pathetic and um, they went down there to do a recce and then when they came back the series producer asked me to ask my friend who you know who worked in a company was the head of finance mm -hmm. and he was black and um, ask him if he had any brothers that could help out and um, act as security for the for the crew while they're filming in Peckham it was just it was unbelievable so mm -hmm. yeah I, I told her about herself so yeah. <laughs> that was that <laughs> <laughs> yeah what do you think of people who cannot see beyond or below this your skin but who only see your skin and not the real you the achiever do you mean within the industry? Within the industry, yeah. Within an industry. I mean, it's, do you know what I'm finding now? I, that because I'm freelance as well, I get longer contracts, obviously, because of the nature of the job. But mm. I'll turn up to a job and people are quite wary still because I know it sounds terrible, but they think, oh, you must have come up on some diversity thing or something. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I've been doing this for 25 years now together. Well, I've been in the industry for 25 years. So, because they don't hear about you because you're not, visible or, or we weren't um, until relatively recently they'll sort of come across you they look at my cv they'll 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 soon see but that they, they there's a lot of thing that's tokenism still i find but you just yes. you know I, i've never let i didn't let them bother me at the start when they were saying i couldn't do it so i'm not going to let them bother me now your your name sounds uh, british mm -hmm. what do you think would happen if you were maybe Fumi Okoro from Nigeria, would, yeah. you, would your CV get the same attention? No, I, I know that because I've seen it happen. I still see it happen on occasion. So, yeah, I know I know it wouldn't have done. Same for it um, if it's an Asian name as well. Mm. People just, yeah, it's just people see. I mean, I, I think the whole thing with recruiting and diversity is that no matter who you are you will try and recruit in your own image so what we need to get to is the point where we are the ones doing the recruiting so so you can diversify because naturally if you're if you're oxbridge ed educated and stuff that's who you're going to go for they're your people they're who you understand of i've spoken mm. to talent managers who just don't get i mean when everybody was starting to do their own kind of um, thing with media and started putting on stuff on YouTube and this talent manager and then people did the recruiting she just didn't get it she didn't understand she's like well, what do they want it to be do they want to work in tv do they want to be a presenter I don't understand mm. this mm. I'm not having them and, and a lot of sort of black and Asian creatives were starting to do that and I, I kind of pioneered that in a way because we didn't have our own outlets so yeah it's interesting that conversation so. You asked an interview a couple of years ago mm -hmm. and you asked who the commissioner of the channel was. Can you mm -hmm. tell us the story, please? Yeah, yeah, I was being interviewed for some nonsense and um, wasn't something I particularly wanted to do anyway, but I just thought I was going through the motions, says, oh, what, what's, um, who's the commissioner? I said, oh, it's so-and-so, but they're not very good because they came through the diversity scheme. And, we, and which is goes to what I was saying, that's still what people think, you know, somebody who's at commissioning editor level must be rubbish because he only got in because of the, the, the colour of his skin. And, that, and that's the hot topic at the moment. It's just, and how did I, didn't that, get, I didn't get the job. <laughs> and how did it make you feel anyway? Well, I just like, I wasn't particularly surprised. I was quite shocked that she said it because having worked in TV and also as a not proper job, as I call them, before I got into TV, I know very well that it can be much more blatant in, in the real world. And in TV, people are a little bit more, you know, it's more hidden, isn't it? So I was quite shocked that she said it out loud, to be honest. And this is this is interesting. This is sad, really. And you also experienced the runner being uh, discriminated against. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you give us a short account of that? And yeah, yeah. There was, right a, now? There, there was a couple of that. It was the male runner. Um, he, um, I used to work for a company that did a scheme where it was six months you were a runner, then they give you a job for two months, and then you sort of go out into the big wide world. Mm. And he got to the end of his six months, and. Um, what one of my white friends at the at the company told me that they'd asked about using him on their show and he said 
oh no, well, I'm, I'm don't, we're not going to keep him, he's too aggressive, which is just absolute. I mean, he's the most gentle, it, it doesn't matter anyway, but he was mm. the most gentle man, but it's, it's that kind of, you know, it's the stereotype, black man aggressive. I mean, it's still not enough black men in TV, but um, he got past all that. That was probably about 10 years ago. And now he's a really successful director at a really prestigious company. So good yeah. for him. And he's got, a, he's got a bit, he's, he's got a Nigerian name. So he had to, he had to go oh for it God. all, but he's, yeah, he's doing, yeah, he's doing well. You know, I always say to people, oh, when you fall, get up and keep moving. Because mm. the person who has made you fall is usually standing behind you. Mm. And you never fall and wake up behind the person who made you fall. Mm. That would be a mystery. You always work, you always, you always get up and go forward. Mm. That's, that's interesting. Thank mm. you very much, Diana. You are so inspirational. Uh, your account is so illuminating. And Richard, she is, Diana is your sister. Indeed. And um, really, tell me about your inspiration yourself. Where did you get it? Um, I think the, the, the main, um, it, when I was wanted to st start out, in, I was always kind of interested in kind of those sorts of subjects and kind of um, history and, and English. And, and I knew it was going to be that kind of writing or journalism sort of sort of um, line of work. So mm -hmm. I, I thought I was, I was going to go that sort of way rather than say science, uh, science is a maths and that sort of thing, really. So I kind of always kind of steered towards that, that sort of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Originally wanted to be a journalist because again, TV wasn't something that you felt that it was kind of, again, this, uh, the, in the eighties. Um, so the late eighties, uh, left school. I think the, in the eighties, there was nobody like you on television. Except maybe just a few but, but on, on the, there was there was um, there was various on screen on screen talent if if, if you like um Florella Benjamin I'm not sure the people yeah. have heard of her or or Jim Donald or Lenny Henry especially there were a few faces here and here and there which which which, which is always great to see but most of them on Crime Watch. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's unfortunately that is that is that is that that could that could be that could be the case as well. So I wanted to kind of go into journalism, go into into journalism and that, and that sort of line of work. And I decided that um, um, eventually had to. Uh, I worked for a publishing company for a couple of years. Uh, then decided that yes, media was the thing I wanted to do. And that point as well, my sister, when you went, you went to Luton, I was saying, what's eighty nine? You went to Luton. Yeah. yeah. So I left school in eighty eight. Uh, my sister went to. Um, a uni in, in 89 I went down and visited one particular uh, one particular weekend and like saw a couple of things that she was doing thought oh, this is great this is just quite this is quite interesting um so actually an inspiration as she always has been <laughs> since I've known her who's obviously I've known since, since mm. white firm, is, is 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 my is my is my sister That's yeah yeah right. coming from from New York did you ever feel uh, did you ever experience the same discrimination your sister experienced and how did you cope with it what coming up for the inch it's i suppose when you walk uh, you i have to say that walking you, you always feel that kind of discrimination every time you step out your front door you obviously have to kind of put your cloak on if you like and, and that sort of mm. thing unfortunately, and approach things in a um in a certain way that that, that um, the people who you're going and out and meeting are mm -hmm. against what sisters alluded to are kind of comfortable with that that you're that they are comfortable with that type of um, uh, black I can speak specifically as, as a black male that people are kind of happy that that kind of that's that, that's the way that um, uh, that, that's something that they recognise and feel at, at ease with um, I think uh, I I um, Started. The, I went to university uh, for, for 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 three years down in Surrey. So wherever I had to go, I've always had to. Uh, I've always gone to places where I I was the minority. But again, as my sister uh, suggested, you just kind of that's what I wanted to do. So that's where I need to go. And if it's here, Australia, wherever wherever my job's taken to me, I've 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 got to go and got to um and do that. So you have you and. With editing as well, it's I suppose my sister's more kind of on the front line in the open plan office. She's more yeah. to I think. Mm -hmm. with editing, I'm kind of it's just me and another producer next to me, and we're kind mm -hmm. of working together. So you mm -hmm. don't really have that kind of. A lot of people actually come into ed edit suites just to kind of have a bit of a moan about the production. You hear bits and pieces, but mm -hmm. I've never had. I have to say, I've never had a time where I've heard anything that I'm not, I'm not particularly comfortable with in work, at home definitely. 
of like that at home in the environment, normal environment. Yes, mm-hmm. definitely. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah, the environment yeah. where you feel yeah. um, yeah. you are you are kind of on you you kind of on show and uh, you kind of feel that you need to. The important thing for me was always that okay, I'm not just representing myself, I'm not just representing my family, I'm also representing um, black people, black black males going into the industry. And mm-hmm. when I first started out in um, in the industry in 1996, I was always very conscious of of you know that I need to um, come across in in a way that mm-hmm. um, that 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 would made me that made me receptive to to, to to so you kind of put it's, it's strange you kind of put a bit of a cloak on you kind of mm. it was like being like a, a secret agent if you like do you know what I mean you kind of feel <laughs> that you you kind of you can be yourself we can't show yeah. as, as much as you probably would normally because they'll kick up oh that's a stereotype they got that because yeah. sometimes people got they got their own kind of um mm. Do, 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 you know what? At, at times, maybe when you are looking for a job as a freelance, and then they discover, oh yes, you've got a very good accent, but mm-hmm. no, you don't have the skin they were expecting. Mm-hmm. Do they sometimes doubt your capabilities because of the way you look? I have to say, I haven't. I don't think uh, I've had. Uh, I've had a couple of moments where I, m- I remember one particular moment actually that I, w- I was a, f- a friend of mine who I'm, I'm holding with now actually he'd worked at this morning ITV for quite a long time and I w- um, worked uh, he told me that he was he was leaving the job and he was like I'll come do some freelance work which you know uh, and this is like kind of I've been into my career to mm-hmm. about 15 years into my career now thinking about it mm-hmm. and um, I remember walking <laughs> I remember walking in, he was, the chap was walking in front, my friend, who's a, a, a white man, he was walking in front of me. I walked in behind him and actually saw the, the, the guy who, who, who I've been speaking to, obviously I spoke to him on the phone, the guy was booking for the job, I spoke to him on the phone. He was like the lead editor on this particular show. I spoke to him on the phone quite a few times. Obviously my friend had told me uh, about, uh, that I was, I was decent, I was, I was good, I could do the job and everything. But when he, when he, the chap, my friend walked in front of me, and I walked in behind him. And the, the guy who was doing the who who was offered me the job, I walked. Uh, I walked in, and he was leaning up against the the, the uh, sink. He kind of jolted like that because he did. Oh my god! It was like it was like what was in his name? Like, yeah, he jolted. <laughs> I thought, yeah, I was talking about this thing the other day. Actually, it was like he literally he just jolted. That's the only time. I thought, oh right, I said, but at that point, I thought, right. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, I am. But this is it. Yeah, I'm like. But I'll show you. Yeah. But even though you may think you, you you're, you're you're in shock already, mm-hmm. you need to sit down, and I'll do the, I'll do <laughs> and put his job as <laughs> go that guy that guy, and I do, and I still I still work there now, and it's uh, That's and I, I know that person as well, and sometimes as well he's come in because he was quite institutionalized as well in that, yeah. and he's come in and ask me, oh, how do you do that effect? And how do you do this? Because like, obviously I thought, right, okay, here we go. I'm going to show him like, this effect, I'll drop that. And he said, oh, do this, do that. And I, I knew that I had to like get to a even bigger level to kind of show him, to prove to him that I could do it, but could do it. Now, do it do you know what now I mean? he so, sees your integrity. Now he sees your integrity and not your skin. Of course, of course absolutely. And that's, and that's always that's always the big trick, isn't it? Always trying to convince uh, mm-hmm. People, even walking down the road, or what, 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 mm-hmm. what have you. To you know I me, mean? I think um, Tracy, who brought, who was worked with, mm-hmm. I lived in York for two years, working for a production company with Tracy Malloy. Do and, you think, um, therefore, as a black man, you've got to put an extra effort to be mm-hmm. recognised uh, as compared to your white counterpart? Yeah, and I, I, was, I mean, with my freelance, con- um, I've started a new job soon. Mm. And again, I'm going to go in there. They don't know anything about me. Actually, what well, they know about they never see my CV, they pressed all that. I've been recommended mm. by somebody else. So it's great. So I'm in the same sort of situation. But mm. I need to go, to go in there and I know that I have to not just do the job. I mm. need to blow their socks off. I mm. know that. So I'm ready. I am ready for that week. And I'm just going to be even, even, even better than what they 
even mm. think. So I know that I, I, it's just, just the way it is. And that's kind of how I'm wired. And my wife has always been frustrated by I'm always going, oh, it takes so so long. But it's always because, why are you, why are you working late on that way? But it's always that kind of, uh, I would agree that we have to kind of, I have to feel that like kind of I've done more than better and that kind of would even this day would never really leave me I've always got to be no it's gonna be better no I could do better no it's this no that you know and mm. and I don't want to leave and my dad my dad used to, used to say you know don't give anybody the, mm. the ammunition to shoot you down with don't ever do that don't yeah. give that ammunition don't <laughs> give it the, give me don't give me and one one last interesting question and um, do you feel black people undermine themselves, look down upon themselves, and as a result, they fail to achieve? I'm sure, I'm sure that it, I'm sure that can be a case. I mean, to, I mean, I have still have things which um, make me, you know, that I've been doing this for 20, 26 years now. Still, kind mm. of, there's still things ingrained in me from years yeah. back, and being told that and, and for that. That kind of st still stay with me now, and obviously will never ever leave me. So mm. I'm, I've no doubt that uh, other people would feel that way if they didn't have um, the strong family support or that or, or um, uh, people who did stuff and believed in you. So yeah, mm. I've, no, I've no doubt people would definitely struggle to um, yeah. uh, feel their worth in the world at anything they they, they want to do to give they don't come from the right sort of. Support or, or yeah. the, Richard, I, I I can speak to you. I can speak with you for twenty four hours nonstop. <laughs> you're, you're, just you're just an oasis of knowledge. You're just an oasis of knowledge. We'll chat later. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. Anyway. Get it, get it tired of it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll come back to you. Let, let's get to Nikki. Yeah. Uh, hello, hello, Nikki. Hi. <laughs> just, hi. To Richard. Uh, what inspiration? Yeah. Tell me. In 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 a podcast, you said someone after, you said someone after hearing your your accent on the phone was so impressed. But when they saw you, they were surprised you were wearing a different skin to that they were expecting. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, sure. Um, so with being from Yorkshire, I've got quite a broad accent, and um, gosh, this is quite some time just trying to work out how long I've been in the industry, probably for about 20 years now, just over 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, I spent quite a lot of time making calls on the phone as opposed to emailing. And um, it just got to the point when I was calling in particular at that time, agents in London, and they couldn't understand what I was saying. And it was really frustrating because, um, you know, I was, you know, yeah, I thought I was speaking quite clearly, but um, because of that, I decided to try and speak in a way where people could understand me. So I was having a conversation on the phone one day with a client and um, we arranged to set up a meeting. Um, and when I turned up to the meeting and he, he the first thing, apart from actually, you know, he might have actually said hello <laughs> before saying, mm -hmm. gosh, I, I thought you had, you know, would have had blonde hair. I thought you were middle class and white. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, gosh, back then my response was, well, aren't I surprised then? And, um, and yeah, uh, I mean, I don't think I've had anybody who's been sort of as upfront and as blatant as that in the industry. But um, it was disappointing, but, um, you know. How did you feel? Um, I just was quite, quite shocked, really. I just didn't expect that, you know, just sort of meeting somebody for the first time. You kind of don't expect that's going to be their opening conversation, really. Mm. Uh, so I was quite shocked and disappointed, obviously, because of that, you know. Um, yeah. But have you met the, that person again ever since? No, I can't say I have. No, I can't say I have. No. Bless no. your eyes. I don't think you need to see him, them, them again. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not. No. Yeah. Now, now tell me, you are a casting director, and yeah. your responsibility is to pick the people we see on screen. Yeah. Tell me. Are, are there any policies in place to hire a number of uh, black ethnic minorities 
to represent the wider population or the screen is still Euro-centric or British? Yeah, so there has been quite a massive change. I think that's evident with the commercials that you can probably see that are actually on now. Um, it's my job to obviously break down um, the actors for the director to meet. We don't always get the final say, we can just put together a selection. So we work with agents and we'll, mm. you know, we'll get a casting brief. And from that, we'll, that will go to agents and it will go out through all our, all our portals where we're looking for talent. And then it's up to us to pull in the talent that we feel you know, fit the brief that we've been given. Um, but the briefs are a lot more open now. Um, I'd say probably 20 years ago, they'd be very specific and you'd, you'd see regular briefs, casting briefs, such as yeah. um, white Caucasian male, 30s, um, white Caucasian female, quite a lot of the time you would see that on a brief, but now it's very open. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, somebody like myself that's been in the industry, I've been kind of the person where I would just, I'd look at the casting brief and then I just think, okay, it's, to me, it's about getting the right actor for that role. Mm -hmm. so I would, in effect, kind of ignore that, you know, if it said Caucasian white actor, I would just think, who, who, who could do this? So I'd often enough, even when it did say that, bring in um, an actress of colour. Um, mm. And, um, you know, sometimes actually, uh, the, the director of the client would go for that option. So, um, so there's a little, bit of like, a little bit of that and sometimes absolutely not. So basically I just break rules completely and just ignore them to a certain extent. Um, mm. Yeah. And that's just how I've worked. How and, I you're, and you're also the chair of the European Diversity Committee. Do yeah. you need to briefly explain what you do in, in this yeah. world? And sure. can diversity in the casting side of uh, the industry ever be improved as a result of that organization? So it's the Casting Society of America and it's a European chapter. And basically it's a new position which I've just fallen into. And unfortunately, um, it was sort of around the time of when it was the first lockdown. Mm -hmm. So what the um, what has been chair, what we try to do is obviously um, raise awareness, but also op open opportunities to actors, um, Black, Asian, South Asian, um, Middle Eastern actors, and, mm -hmm. and we'll, we'll put together a panel, we'll organise that, of speakers, we did one actually uh, during lockdown, and we had a representative from BAFTA, somebody from the BFI, and we were just talking about the issues and about change. And then also another part of that is we'll invite actors in um, where they can meet casting directors and they can actually audition. So it's given them an opportunity to meet, you know, meet with casting directors. So we, we do open calls on that. Um, and, and again, just speaking on panels as well. Um, so I haven't really fallen into the role as much as I really want to get, you know, um, involved in that position. And given a choice, what changes would you make in the casting department if you get a choice? Um, so I think it's not just the casting department. I think, I think now, there has been more change, whereas we are, well, casting directors, that's something that I've always done, but I can speak, you know, it's evident with other casting directors that they are inviting more diverse talent into the casting suite. Um, mm -hmm. But I think it's a collaborative of uh, working together with industry professionals, such as the writers. I mean, I work on a lot of films as well. So we've got like the sales uh, agents. I think they need to work more um, and um, you know pull together really. I think it starts from the writing essentially, yeah. I would say. Yeah. But also sell, selling a film. You know, now we're getting on an independent low budget, you know, indie film. Can we get Idris Elba to play the lead? Well, there's, you know, there's more black actors than Idris that's around so I think it's just giving opportunity and I think with the casting society 
uh, that I work on. We, that's something that we're doing. We're just trying to, you know, get casting directors to meet up and coming actors. And I think that needs to be done more. I think we need to yeah. you know, go back and, and look at, um, you know, even as far as school and just see, um, you know, what talent is around and who's, you know, who's coming up instead of just focusing on the established actors that we've got. We need to give more. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. I, I know, you know, we can talk and until, I don't know, you've got so much to, 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 to let us know. Uh, unfortunately, time seems to be jealousy of whatever we're doing here. And let me come to some statistics here. I would like us all as uh, panelists to interrogate. About 14% of the UK population is from the Black ethnic minority background, according to, F to figures from the Diversity UK, yet the same demographics do not reflect when it comes to management positions, according to our research. Take, for instance, our esteemed BBC. Out of 12 board members, there is only, there, there is zero, uh, there is not a single person of Black ethnic minority. And out of 10 executive uh, committee members, there is only one. ITV, has got two out of 12 board of directors who are of ethnic minorities and one out of 13 in the management team. And channel four has got one out of 10 board members, board of directors and zero out of five uh, management team. Tell me, what is the problem here? What is genetically wrong with black people to make them not compatible with management roles and board of members, uh, and and which makes them not qualified to be even board of, uh, members of, of any board in the broadcasting industry? Are we genetically inferior? Are we mentally inferior? What is it? Are we wearing a wrong skin? Minus the skin. Do we have the integrity and the capacity to be in those positions? It's over to you, any one of the panel members, let's talk. Well, of course we've got the capacity to do it, but TV is very much Oxbridge and they, you know, they stick with their own. And I think, I think, I think a hell of a lot of this has got to do with class, to be honest. I really do. I mean, so what you said about uh, Nikki when you said that, yeah. you know, they couldn't understand you. When I first moved to London from Birmingham, I, they could not understand the word I was saying. Not one word. It was it was ridiculous. Yeah. 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 Not at all. So you know, I changed my accent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I echo that, uh, Diane. Diana, um, as well. Uh, you know, I think TV is absolutely that um, just from the casting point of view, it's still the same casting directors that are in TV. Mm -hmm. uh, commercials seems to be, you know, you can see the change more there, um, but yeah, <coughs> yeah, I, I echo what you're saying. Mm. I mean, that Black to Front initiative from a few months ago, um, I don't know if anybody remembers it, but Channel 4 decided to divide, divide sorry. Something's getting weird, isn't it? Sorry, Channel 4 decided to, dive, um, you know, devote their day's programming to, mm -hmm. you know, black programming or, yeah, and that was initiated by a black commissioner there who I worked with years ago and she was a director. She she got some crap as well, as I remember, but now she's a, a commissioning editor. So yeah, mm -hmm. D one. But I, I, I don't know, it's, um, it was really hard for them to crew it all up, which I thought said everything about the industry. They they had to get a lot of white people involved because there wasn't enough of us in the industry to fill all of the roles. So at the lower level, yeah, they could get people fine, or but at the higher level or the skilled jobs like my brother does and that, they really struggled and that tells you everything you need to know. And that's why anybody is out there thinking of going into it, now's your chance, because then, you know, they're begging for people now. Mm. Mm. 
you, you, you've never you've never had it so good so if you if you've got your head screwed on and you want yeah. to do it this is the time to go for it yeah before that door closes again yeah. Exactly. Course, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. It could be, short, yeah. It could be a, a very small window. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. This is the third diversity initiative I've been through in twenty years. Yeah. Sorry, Brad. What you can say? No, that's all. That's uh, yeah. Yeah. Just, 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 just agree with that. Really, it, it, it's. I, I've found that kind of um, normally, if you if you, if you're uh, you're white, I feel, I feel that you kind of it's just normal for you to kind of speculate to accumulate. But with it, um, when you're of colour, though, you kind of you kind of need to assimilate to accumulate, really. And you just got to just kind of play the game a, 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 a little bit more and play everything as almost as tactically as, as you possibly can. And um, it's it's unfortunate, but as I, what I find, as you say, guy, that it kind of now is a good time because over the last. 25 years or whatever that I'd like to think that the companies that I've been going into are working for the companies I have done and have been uh I've been staff and and have come back to and what have you I've always seen over the last 20 years more black people coming into the industry mm. and uh, I'd like to think that um that just just us being in there in part of it and being a face in it and just mixing with mm. um those other people as, as you know, think oh well you know Rich is all right, Don's all right, Nikki's all right, all right. You know what I mean? They're kind of all right. Yeah, let's give them a chance, and hopefully, that will will keep moving up. And obviously, will yeah. us here will need to move up the food chain as well. So everybody else can come in, yeah. come in as, as well, yeah. in behind us. So then, as I say, it's not about us oh, sort represent us to the family. It's, it's it's about kind of everybody else coming behind me, including, yeah. including my, my, my six year old, my twelve year old. You know, it's it's the same thing. You, you, you know, it's just kind of we got to try to just pay things forward and, and make sure that there's an opportunity for everybody to um, have a voice and have an opportunity. And I think, you know what, things are changing mm -hmm. um, for the better of a lot of things. That, 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 um, uh, women are getting better chances of things and there's LGBTQ things. Are, 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 you'll see changes in, in seeing things being called out when, means that when people know things are wrong, things are being... Mm -hmm. There's things being yeah. called out more now. There's not less mm. in you know, it's almost like now you can't get away with anything. And that's kind of great, really, because you you know, it's kind of actually people it gets the quicker people realise that it's actually just inherently wrong to, to think like that and completely just unfair, then once it, once they realise that, that is just you know, that's just then we'll get some sort of and we'll get some sort of justice and everybody, mm. every single sort of demographic will have have their time, have their moment. But as you're saying, Di, that is a good, you know, now in, you're right, never had it so good. I'm sitting there and mm. think, I'll sit there and watch watch the, the TV adverts on ITV and think, wow, that, mm. that's quite a, that's that's what rep represent this I live in South East London and there's <laughs> there's loads of black people on that on that you know, four minute advert break and I'm thinking wow that's that's a lot. So mm. it's great to, to have that and have the have the faces and stuff like that. Yeah. We don't want to saturize it all. We want everybody to be, the, the, everybody to work hard and the cream of the crop will, will, will rise to the top and everybody else will have a chance as well coming behind us. It's interesting you should say that uh, about change. Uh, however, here's a very interesting statement from uh, a board member of the BBC, Shamia Shah, a member of the BBC board of directors says, broadcasters have uh, overcompensated for their lack of executives from the ethnic minorities by putting too many black and Asian faces on the screen. She goes on to say that, uh, had, uh, she goes on to say this has led to a world of de-racianated colored people flickering across the screens to the irritation of many viewers and the embarrassment of the very people such actions are meant to appease. Oh my God, do you agree with these points raised by this board member? And uh, what should change? Where should it, where should we start? How should we do it? When and how, my God? Can you please uh, illuminate, illuminate us on that please, thank you. It does make me laugh when 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 people complain about you know you read the comments of, on any website or any story and it always it could be about like a baby being rescued from an orphanage and they'll soon start on the racism it doesn't matter you know they'll soon start on that mm. and 
I know I, I do. I am aware that a lot of people are complaining about the amount of diversity on screen because it is on screen. And it, it, that is something with spoke screen. But what harm is it actually doing to you? Is it if that that's a deeper issue, isn't it, about what the, the British, what it means to be white British or the British psyche or, you know, I don't know whether it's it's mm. a guilt thing or a, but, but what harm is it actually doing to see somebody who looks different to you? I don't get it. And if you live in like Devon, this is literally all you have to do with us. It's not like you've got us living next door to you. What's your problem? I don't mm. I don't understand it. So. It's hard to understand. Come on. And Nick, what do you have to say? Right. Sorry, bro. I didn't mean to stop you. Sorry. Sorry. Let's get professional again. Sorry. Absolutely. David. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, there is another very interesting statement here from Lenny Henry. Lenny Henry has uh, bemoaned the lack of diversity in British Broadcasting Corporation, urging the organization to go back to the drawing board to increase the number of Black and Asian executives. Uh, let me talk about you, uh, panelist. Do you think you have reached where you have always aspired to be? Or do you feel there are still roadblocks in front of you which make you fail to reach your target? Yeah, and I'm, 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 I turned 50 at the end of the year. So there's, a, you know, there's a maybe I've got 15 years or less in, in, in the industry. And there's still things that I want to try to achieve and over the last years well, a few years I've tried um new projects and new this that and the other and and uh, all tv and media related stuff like that and and found it difficult to break into that but mm. as my sister alluded to uh, that, uh, now been a good time now to say I've done a better chance now than other time to kind of um to, to get to, to get in there now so I'm, I think I'm gonna um tr that's my next goal for next five or six years to say, right, okay, I'm going to try and get to the, the, the level now. And I, I saw a comment from, from sorry, was it Glenn earlier on as well about having to have your own, I'm not sure if you're going to go through these questions or not, um, about having your own production companies and stuff like that. Um, I, I want to try and get to that level, level there where I can get other people to, to come up behind me and do... Um, and I'll have my own production company and have my own my own things and so I can I can mm -hmm. um get in with the, the, the same sort of people who have kind of we all kind of moved up the food chain as well, the people who I know as well. So I feel like I'm kind of on the level with some of them, but not quite there yet. So that'll be work in progress for me over the, over the next few years. So uh, I don't know, it's what Mr. And then Lenny Henry, Henry is, is great and it's a great, great voice for us and everything. So, you know, it's, it's, it's good. Hopefully we can, um, I don't know what he says is right, really. We can build on things, you know, we can just build and take things a step further. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not going to be easy. It's no. not going to be easy, but that is the next step. What challenges? I'm glad you're saying it's not going to be easy. Yeah. Why is it not going to be easy? Sorry? Why is it not going to be easy? Because they've, 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 got, be they've got to preserve the status quo. That's just like, that's the, yeah. Yeah. the ruling class, aren't they? Yeah. 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 Everybody wants to maintain their position. I mean, I'm quite unusual because I don't want to do, and I've been offered promotions many, many times, but I don't want to go past the level that I'm at because I don't really want to do that job. I like being able to work on a project and then go off and do, some, do another project. I don't want to be there running the business side of it. Um, so the opportunities have been there for me, but I have worked in, um, I didn't see Glenn's question, but I, there are quite a few black led companies around and I did work for one um, mm -hmm. earlier well, the, last year and, and the beginning part of this year. And um, trust me, if, so, if somebody's mad, they're mad. So it doesn't matter what they are. They are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can you can say that again, especially when mm. you consider what is happening across the pond called the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, we've got a lot of mm. <laughs> I won't mention names. Okay. Mm. Now 
Now, is the media uh, diverse enough? Uh, and what do you think? Uh, what uh, uh, is diversity just a window dressing, or is it really uh, being implemented in these media organizations? Well, we hope so, don't we? <laughs> um, and I think the real test, you know, it will, you know, like like you mentioned, Diana, um, now's our chance, now's anybody's chance that wants to make headway into the industry, do it whilst they can, you know, because you just don't know what's going to happen. It's a real, mm. you know, um, testing time. Um, everybody's kind of jumping on the bandwagon and opening mm. up these opportunities, but... Are they just doing it to look good? You know, these heads of, of you know, commissioners and heads of departments just to look good. So you'd hope that, you know, it was a, it was done with integrity, really. Um, but yeah. I mean, the other thing we've got in our favor at the moment is there's such a shortage of people in the industry now that, yeah. that they will, yeah, just, just yeah. get in there because they're mm. crying out for people absolutely mm. desperate because a lot of a lot of um we i mean we've worked in it for a number of years we all know it's it can mm. be hard going in stupid hours and stuff mm -hmm. but i think when you first go in and you've got this idea like oh, it's going to be so glamorous and you end up like cleaning cleaning unblocking a toilet with a coat hanger like i oh, had to God. do on a shoot once mm. it kind of scales fall from yours and not a lot of people like you know some people just don't want to do it and then if you leave the industry after two or three years that's it you know you, you've got a shortage so if you're really passionate about it now's the time to get yeah to get in. right can i ask the following three questions and just pick them up together because of time mm -hmm. uh, one person is with racism being flagged uh, up as far back as the slave trade who should change what should change where should we start and what is the timeline and what advice do we have uh, for aspiring black ethnic minority media practitioners and finally what advice do we have for the broadcasting industry we should walk the walk and not only talk the talk mm -hmm. I, sorry, go on. Go, 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 go. now i was going to say that um as i mentioned before i was working for an all black production company and sort of half the staff there were like ancient like me and the other half were in their early 20s and just starting out and I thought what was really interesting is the different attitudes that we had so we would be talking about something and whereas I think we still slightly got the mentality that if if we see a black person on screen we're kind of a little bit grateful of oh look how far we've come the younger people are like no we expect this we demand this we, we're owed this and I think that's I think that's where things are going to change that's good because We've been here long enough now. Mm. Yeah, we, you know, and it, I, I think it's good that the young people are coming through. So, well, know that this is my right. I demand this. This is what I'm having. Mm -hmm. No one's going to stop me. I think that's what the, where where the change is going to come. Yeah. 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 I answer the question. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any, anything, Richard? Uh, do you? Uh, uh, I know you also don't believe in affirmative action. You believe that people must be promoted according to their ability, not because of who they are. Uh, is there anybody who can comment on that? Yeah, I think that uh, I think, I think any. I mean, that's not always that's not always the case, unfortunately. But uh, I think you always have to try and work hard and earn your earn your right and earn, earn your place. And yes, as 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 as, as black people, we, we do feel that like we need to work harder to, to to get there. That that's unfortunate, but you know, it is. I do feel that you know the over um that the powers that be, the people who actually got the jobs, are kind of the the, the jobs and, and it's going to be creating these people. They're kind of on the back foot a bit now. So, which is, which is kind of good, really. So it's a good time now to just keep pushing forward and stuff like that with it and um, try and build a, mm. build a black middle class, if you like, in, in terms of how, um, having a, a place where we can, we can say, right, okay, yeah, we're, 
we're, we're equal. We can be, we, we can be better. We can we we can, we can be stronger. And it's um, it, it's good now that um, there's we've got a lot more um, visual representation because you know I'm just as proud as of Idris Elba as I was Big Nasty. I mean, it'd be, it'd be people know Big Nasty, so that would be quite scared and be scared of him, and he would come across as, uh, as maybe a lot of little little stereotypes. I'm just as proud of him as as Idris Elba. So it's it's, it's important that we have different kinds of um, uh, people from all kinds of different um, races and backgrounds and, and okay. in, in the industry and are, are accepted and I think it's good now that as I say people feel on the, on the back foot a little bit about it and it's kind of a good time now to kind of be ourselves and and, and um, LGBTQ be themselves and, and, and women be, them, be themselves not feel like you are kind of kind of again kind of having to assimilate to to, to get in anywhere anywhere near in your career and what you're doing really, so things are things are changing. I was going to say slowly but quite quickly as well, if that makes sense, you know. So I don't know. There's a minute left. I've got to stop talking. I've got to say. Very different from uh, one of the high schools in Manchester who wanted to have a comment. I don't know whether she's there. Her name is Tia. Uh, are you there, Tia? Anyway, uh, if not, then. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, according to Sue, we are running out of time. Am I right, Sue? Can we still reply to these questions, Warren? Yes, please do so, please. Yeah, I, I, I think if we can go through, because they've been quite patient, patient the people <laughs> that have been putting yeah. the questions in. Yeah. So I think if we can maybe whiz through some of them for five minutes, that would be really Yeah, good. because we've got also questions from the, the chat box here, which is re which are really interesting, which we have like the panel to respond to. Carry on, Richard, then. Well, I can't say if it was, it was oh, I Glenn, but actually Gary, I was talking about. Sorry, sorry, Sue. Hmm. We say something. Okay. I, I was going to Gary's question. Gary asked whether panelists feel the choice facing uh, BAME media professionals is either to set up production companies, increasing the way mainstream TV channels manage output, or go into mainstream channels and be required to behave like white presenters, producers with black skin is a fair assessment. I think that um, now uh, TV is great now that there's there's a lot of different platforms. There's you know a lot, a lot of, there's there's um, not just not, not just YouTube and 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 and, and um, Amazon, Netflix, stuff like that. There's lots of different kind of things, and lots of people have people know good content, and people will always will be flocked to that content as long as that content is good, whatever it is, even if it's a thirty second TikTok. People flock to to good content, so I think that mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what what your who you are. I think that you kind of find a platform, whether that it where whatever that is wherever it is and obviously as you said the TV industry is coming in line with all this and recognizes all this you know the fact that BBC3 so it went to go online a few years ago it's like what are they doing that are you we get it now because if you see the program they've got now as well it's appealing to a different audience who watch television in a different way so there's lots of different um, out, out, outputs now and lots of different vehicles for people to get their their content out so I think that you need to kind of mm. Get good stuff. Get good stories. Get good things that their people believe in. If you, if you know, if you build it, they will come. You know, so um, I would echo that. And I'd also say because I, I saw one of the questions as to what do, what do people need to to get into the industry. What we've what I find a lot from talking to a lot of young people is they don't watch telly anymore, which is really interesting. If you're going to go and be interviewed some or want to get into this industry. Just start watching it, start consuming it and start supporting the black content because money talks at the end of the day. If they put something on and nobody watches it, it ain't coming back. So mm. you watch it, you support it, you tweet about it, you do what you got to do. And yeah, and just, just go to... And also there's another thing because I've been... I was paired... I went out on a Channel 4 scheme where they wanted um, me to mentor somebody. And... Um, that was 2014 and all now she hasn't contacted me so if you get a comp if you get an opportunity and somebody's willing to speak to you and help you do it because that's happened to me several times actually and I, I want to mentor somebody from the community I want to bring somebody I want to help somebody along mainly because I don't want to be doing this till I'm 70 I want somebody to cover up I want all of you come all these people I want you mm -hmm. to heels and taking over and 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 making changes in the industry but any help anybody wants I'm willing to give but if you get offered that make sure you take it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Nikki, <laughs> is there one of the questions that you wanted to pick up on? Um, I'm just trying to have a look now. Um, hold on a second. There's one aimed at you at 744, is it 741? Yeah. The question aimed at Nikki concerning casting. It's great that breakdowns are coming out and not, are more inclusive, but do you find that sometimes it can be the opposite? You can do the opposite. Sometimes breakdowns say they're committed to diversity, that the selection made by casting directors are not aimed at including diversity. If, it, if they already have their own breakdown, they are looking, if they are, if they already have their own breakdown, they are looking for, they were looking for. Uh, I don't understand that last bit actually. So um, if, Sometimes, yeah, go. Yeah. <laughs> go, go. So, um, well, basically, um, I don't think that would be on the breakdown if we weren't looking for actors that were from diverse backgrounds. I don't think that would be on, you know, um, I don't think that would be not. Um, but I don't understand that last bit. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Never put it wrong, did you? Yeah. Therapy, sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes breakdowns say they are committed to diversity, yet the selection made by casting directors are not aimed at including diversity. So if also, they have yeah. their own breakdown, they were looking for. Yeah, so also the selection, we don't have the final say, it's the directors um, so, and the producers that have the final say. And if it's for a commercial, it's the client. Yeah. But have, have you seen final. any stereotyping uh, in your casting, which is really uh, affecting the, your choice of characters? Is there any? Stereotyping. Um, what in my breakdowns? Yeah, I mean in your in your casting. No, not no, not in mine. No. Yeah, but no. in but in casting generally. In general, I think definitely there has been yes, um, but I think that's changing now. That you can mm -hmm. see changes in the brief. What ethical considerations do you put in casting, and what or, or, are there any instances when you say ethically you cannot uh, follow this trend, uh, even if the director says yes, this is what he wants? Is there any? Sorry, so can you? Is there sorry. any time when you put ethical considerations? Okay. Yeah. Uh, into account when you are casting. Yeah. Yeah. You can give us an example. So, so sorry, I don't understand. The yeah, for instance, say you are casting somebody, uh, a terrorist, for instance. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then because of the stereotype of what terrorists look like. Mm -hmm. and how do you deal with such a situation? So, I mean, if it's if we're talking about a feature film or a TV drama, we have mm. to read the script. So if it's some, we've got to be passionate about that project. So if it was something which I didn't resonate to or feel passionate about, I wouldn't necessarily choose to work on that project. But if it's a true story that mm. we're casting and it's imperative mm. to that story in that time, then the, the chances are, you know if that's what happened in the story mm. and those characters reflect that, then of mm. course I would cast according to that, if that makes yeah. sense. Okay, yeah. sorry, I'm gonna to have to bring everything to, to a close now. Yeah. Um, I think uh, that, that, I that was brilliant. Thank you all very much. Yeah. Um, and thank you for the people who did post questions. We managed to get some of them and some of them I think were covered by um, the questions that Everett was asking everybody in any case. Mm -hmm. So I will kind of deal with that. Um, but I would really like to thank Everett and Diana and Richard and Nikki and the two interpreters, uh, particularly for the work that they've done on the panel. I'd also like to thank Tracy for putting this together. And I'd like to thank our two student researchers, Sarah and Hayley, who did all the kind of background research that helped us not only find you amazing people, but kind of draw out those stories from you as well, which I think was excellent. I'm sure Everett would want to kind of add his thanks mm -hmm. and wrap everything up as well. Yeah, thank you very much. So thank you very much to uh, uh, everybody who participated in this uh, wonderful and illuminating uh, episode. And I would like to conclude by quoting one of my heroes, Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela says, a man must not be judged according to the color of his skin.
but according to the integrity of his mind. Media, the fourth estate, the watchdog of society, should know that and lead by example. Racism in media can be directly linked to history and entrenched hate. Yet nothing has ever been built on hate except destruction. Once again, Nelson Mandela says, as much as we can learn to hate, so can we learn to love because love comes more naturally to the human heart. Therefore, love must come more naturally to the media industry. Let us have a dream like Martin Luther King. A dream that one day we will be able to work in an, in an industry where we will not be judged according to the color of our skin, but according to the content of our character. Let us dream, wake up and work on our dream. Let us bring true change to the media industry. The time starts now and the architects of this change is me and you. Together as one, like Ebony and Ivory, we can produce perfect harmony. Yes, we can. Have a good night. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much for listening. Bye -bye. <laughs> Thank you, Simon. Good luck. Best of luck with everything what you're doing. Keep going. <laughs> We're with you, right behind you. Come on. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank Bye. you for attending. Bye. 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 Bye.